This week, we're remembering Axe Handle Saturday, 60 years later. Thursday marks the commemoration of the day when a mob of whites armed with axe handles and bats attacked black demonstrators trying to integrate lunch counters in downtown Jacksonville. Blooded and wounded, this photograph showed the world the violent aftermath of Axe Handle Saturday as embarrassed leaders tried to assure the city that things did not get out of hand that afternoon. News for Jacks reporter Kelly Wiley tells us how this picture of a black Jacksonville teen published by Life magazine in 1960 revealed a much different story. 60 years later, and this image is still the most vivid memory of what happened one afternoon in downtown Jacksonville. In the fall of 1960, it was photo proof of a lie. On August 27, 1960, cameras recorded as white men holding axe handles walked through downtown Jacksonville. You could see that they were swinging at everything that looked black. The attacks, with little interference from local police, happening where black teen demonstrators have been sitting at all-white lunch counters for more than two weeks. Mayor, were you surprised at this outbreak? The day after the attacks, then Jacksonville Mayor Hayden Burns told a reporter nothing happened. And not a single member of either group came in contact with an individual of the opposite group. But the story had already made it beyond Jacksonville city limits. More than a week later, on September 12, 1960, on page 37, Life magazine published photo proof of the violence that really happened that day. A photo of high school junior Charlie Griffin, bloodstained with a gash above his eye. The reporter writing Griffin had been bashed in the head with an ax handle, contradicting the story the mayor told. It was a false narrative, and the photo puts the lie to that. It is an example of the sorts of uh, messages that were uh, put out by the leadership, the civic leadership, and the uh, elected leadership of many southern cities who were averse to allowing the news to report candidly on racial tensions in their cities. The president of the NAACP Youth Council who planned the sit-ins in Jacksonville wrote that Griffin was not a member of the Youth Council and was not sitting in that day. He would later tell him that he walked downtown and a white guy ran towards him and took a swing at him with an ax handle. When Charlie started to defend and protect himself, more white men came to hit him with ax handles. It was an example of something that took place when there was still a good reason, a very good reason, to be fearful about advocating for your rights as a racial minority, as a person of color in the United States, uh, especially in the American South. The teen in the photo never told his story to a reporter or wrote a book about what he saw. Instead, the black and white photo of his bloodied face remains an unerasable public record of Jacksonville's past. As a part of our story, we did try to find Mr. Griffin and the life photographer that captured this image all those years ago. We were unsuccessful at finding them. And the sad reality is that as these decades go by, more and more people are, are not here to tell us their story.